Now let's go over how to use the flow tracker keypad to walk through the measurement process on the screen. After you turn on the instrument, you'll see the home screen. The home screen consists of three basic items. One, items for instrument setup. Next, review data files you've already taken. And finally, taking a measurement. You can navigate up and down the screen menu items with the arrow keys, left or right, up or down. And then the soft keys control what options you see at the bottom. So on the left hand side of the screen, you have an option and if you want that, you can select the left soft key. Uh, if you want the item at the right hand side of the screen, you'll select the right soft key. I think you'll find the flow tracker handheld really intuitive and easy to use. So as we walk through the setup parameters, I'm just going to use those arrow keys, start at the top, work my way down to the bottom, and make sure I've checked all the fields. That way we know we won't have missed anything during the setup. At the top, our first item is device configuration. So I'm hitting the enter button, and the first fields that we'll set are for the user interface. What language do we want to use? English, uh, or any number of the languages we support. Just use the right or left arrow button to select. Do we want to use the beeper, for example, to beep at us when our 40 or 60 second measurement is over? Do we want to use a different color scheme or a font size? These are the user interface uh, options. So let's go back to device configuration. Next on the list is application settings. What kind of units do we want to use, US or metric? What kind of weighting rod? What kind of file naming convention? What, uh, what kind of folder naming do we want to use to put these uh, files into? And back to device configuration. Next is templates. Uh, now we can go through this setup process and we can save all of these settings in a template file on the instrument or we could even do this back at our office, save it in our office and then upload it to the flow tracker. Uh, so just know that that's there. I'm going to go back to configuration for now, but we could select a template if we wanted to. Um, you can select a template for either discharge or general measurements. General measurements being if you don't want to go through the whole discharge process, but just want to take point measurements uh, here and there where you want. So that's device configuration. Let's go back to the home screen. Next on the list, utilities. First is system clock. We can either use the UTC time from our GPS or we can enter the clock uh, information manually. But I'm going to go back for now. Next, the recorder. Uh, it shows you how much space is left. Always make sure there's enough space on your uh, recorder before you start measurement. In this case, uh, we're great. If we needed to, we could format the recorder and make space, uh, but we're not going to do that. Let's go back to utilities. Next, battery data. Uh, we can see what percentage we have left and what voltage we're operating at. Uh, if you want to change the battery type to make these battery estimations more accurate, you can do that here. And always remember too that the battery percent is also on the screen at the top anytime uh, during a measurement. So while it's here in the utilities, uh, you'll always be able to see it up there too. Back to utilities. The next two items are raw data and automated beam check. We'll do those in a second in more detail when I get into the water, but just know that those are under utilities. Uh, uh, let's go down to GPS data. The Flow Tracker 2 has a GPS built inside so you can verify your GPS information and how many satellites and quality parameters you have. So if you do want to geo-reference this measurement, uh, it's done properly. Back to utilities. Next is system maintenance, and all that means is the firmware. If you need to upgrade your probe to have the latest firmware, you would do that here. Back to utilities. We've gone through the utilities menu, so back to the home screen. Third on the home screen is communication. And when you select this, all it does is enable you to talk with the flow tracker to your PC. Uh, you would do this to download data files or template files. However, we're not going to do that right now, so I'll go back to the home screen. Fourth on the home screen is system information. This is just basic information. Uh, you can't change it. 
It's good to know where to find it though, for example, if you do need to call tech support or if you have any questions. Uh, one of the first things we'll ask you is what instrument you're using and what serial number do you have. And it's great if you can tell us what firmware version you have. All of that's right here under the system information. Good to know. Back to the home screen. Now that we've covered all the setup options, let's get into the water for a few more quick checks.